right? Um, so we're talking about Unit 15 in Hansen and Quinn. Um, we're talking about reflexive pronouns, okay? Um, this is an important uh, concept to distinguish from what one thing that we already know, which is the, remember the word autos, which has three different meanings. When it's an attributive position, as in ha autos anthropos, or ha anthropos ha autos, or anthropos ha autos, as long as there's an article in front of it, it means same, okay? When it's in predicative position, that is, when it agrees with another noun in the sentence but doesn't have an article uh, before it, um, like ha anthropos autos, okay, you've got the noun there, and the article uh, um, is is there, but it but there's the noun between between the article and autos. That that autos, the predicative position autos, means himself, herself, itself, ourself, yourself, themselves. Okay, mm -hmm. it's a intensifying adjective. Oops. I think that's going to be on our screen. Is it? Is it not going to be on the screen? Okay. I mean, we have to move it down. Okay. Um. So. Um, so the um, the we want to make sure we distinguish the notion of a reflexive pronoun, uh, which is actually a noun, okay, and the intensifying adjective that means himself, herself, itself, themselves. Because in English, the reflexive pronoun is himself, herself, itself, themselves, ourselves, mm -hmm. and yourselves. Um, so and yourself. So. The difference is that the reflexive pronoun is actually a noun, okay, um, and it's not an adjective, whereas autos in a true in predicative position is an adjective only, mm -hmm. okay. Um, not only that, but how if you if you look at the reflexive pronoun, let's start with the first one. How do you say myself? As in, um, I like myself. Okay, that's the direct object of the verb like. It's a noun. Okay, okay. that's what we're talking about. Those words. Um, how do you how do you make a reflexive pronoun in Greek? Well, the well, the way you say myself the noun is emauton. Okay, so if we give the inflection of it, which the book does, maybe we can write this down. Mm -hmm. The genitive is emautu. Okay, the the dative is emauto. Um, this is the masculine forms. Okay, the accusative is emauton. And then the feminine forms, and there is no neuter reflexive pronoun, I guess. <laughs> it's emautes, okay, uh, emaute, I'll slow down, emaute with an iota subscript, um, and emautein, okay. You can see that this is, uh, it really s starts in the accusative, it's just a Amonging together of the of the accusative singular eme with the adjective auton, so it means literally me myself. Okay, so that's a noun, me myself, as opposed to just the word myself, which is uh, an adjective in English as well as a noun. Okay, but literally that's what we're talking about is in em auton is a thing that can only be a noun because it's composed of a pronoun and an adjective. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, these these words mainly occur in the singular. They're not terrifically common in Greek. Okay, if you look at uh, we, the book gives you let, let's look at the singular forms. Okay, there's myself we, up there on the on the screen, and then there is yourself, which is se auto to se auto and se auton. Okay. Um, we're writing it out this way. Whoops. <laughs> I always do that. Sa <laughs> yeah. to sa to sa ton and then and then the feminine one is sa altes sa alte and sa altein, okay? which is you yourself becoming the noun yourself, mm -hmm. okay? Um, often in this word, and, and it's a dialectal feature, in Ionic Greek it looks like that, the natic. You have mm -hmm. set and you can see this and the out too. 
but what happens is that they collapse into each other. You get a, a you lose the air altogether. You get a what's called a crosis, and you get sao tu, okay, sao tu, sao to, sao tan, sao te, sao te, sao te, okay, more mm -hmm. often than not. So you got to be prepared for the missing epsilon there when you see it. Um, you you also have a third person uh, version of this. Can we look at that? Uh, which is he ao tu, okay? And I'll tell you about this in a second. There's no nominative. Yeah, you, you, you don't have a nominative of a reflexive pronoun even in English, right? So if you think about it, there is no need for it. Um, what, you, what you do is you do I myself, right? And in, in Greek, you just do the form of the, uh, the a sentence with autos. You don't even, even ego is already intensifying. If you yeah. really want to say autos, I myself, then you could just use autos. Anyhow, there's he to. This is the third person reflexive pronoun in the singular. And it's derived from an old uh, pronoun. We have attested in older Greek. He, which means him, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's a compound of the adjectival, of the, of the accusative of the pronoun for he, um, with auton, and then it spreads into the genitive and the dative, okay? Um, so, so this is, and you, you also have hauton, uh, you have a collapsing of the he, mm -hmm. just like you see sauton, you also see hauton with an h, or how to, right? Mm -hmm. Watch out, that's not the same as how to, okay? That's how to, right? All right. Um, so the first one is reflexive. The second one is just the, either the pronoun or the intensifying adjective or the word same. All right. Um, book also gives you plural forms of these. The 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 most uh, successful of these plurals is the one for the third person. And why don't we just put it up there before you switch screens? Mm -hmm. You can put it up there now because it's ha out. Tone, autois, autus, and so forth. Okay. Um, autois and autus, and then you have a genitive. I mean, a feminine form. Auton, autais, and autas. And in the case of this form only, you get neuters itself, right? You, you can't have an I and a U that are neuter because by definition they're human beings or alive, right? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Things aren't I or you, but the third person can be in it, right? Mm -hmm. So we have plural, uh, we have reflexive pronouns in the neuter, but not in the, not in the first and second persons, okay? So, um, so these are, the, and the same is true of the neuter plural, it's how, oh, the same as the, as the neuter. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. it's the masculine, masculine plural. So what Except you you can see, one, right? you, you've just got the he, the word for him, that's spread all over the place, and the only thing you're inflecting is the autus. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, on this model, um, that that's one way of doing it. If we go back to the second person singular forms, can we switch to that screen? The the plural of them is going to be not even combined really into one word. It's going to be the the dative of the of the plural. Of the word for you, which is going to be humon, and then a separate word, autone, you yourselves. Okay, so it's not really a lexical thing. It's humon autone, humin autois, and humas aut autus. Okay, if you want to do the masculine forms, and the same thing goes for the first person plural. When the way you say ourselves as a reflexive pronoun in Greek is we ourselves, mm -hmm. two separate words. So you could argue that that's just two separate words and not really the plural of se tu and em tu, okay? Um, but it, the difference is not great, all right? So um, these are, those are the reflexive pronouns, or again, they're a noun. So, so um, then they're not that common in Greek, but there are places where you need to be very explicit when you're saying uh, uh, the, the, the key thing about a reflexive pronoun, what defines it, is that the antecedent of the pronoun, we could, we could say this, okay, is an important thing. A reflexive pronoun is defined by the fact that its antecedent is the subject of the sentence, okay? Mm -hmm. So um, it's, you have to have sentences of the, of the type we like ourselves, or they hated themselves, okay? Mm -hmm. 
and so the antecedent is clear, and that's when you use them. You, you don't say things like that that often. All right.